So let's start the configuration. What I'm going to do here is to show you the actual configuration without VRF and what happens if we do not configure VRF. And then I'm going to assign VRFs here. And I'm going to say that I have two parts in my network. One part is here. The other part is here. And they should not be able to talk to each other, even if, I, if they have overlapping IP addresses. So let's go with this configuration. I'm going to start without VRF and show what the result is. So let's go to router 1. I'm going to show CDP neighbor. The IP addresses are not configured and I'm going to do this right now. IP address is going to be for interface Ethernet 0, 0. IP address of course is going to be 10.1.2.1. 255, 255, 255, 0. For interface Ethernet 0 slash 1, that's going to be 131. For 2, that's going to be 151. And for 3, that's going to be 141. And let's have a look back interface as well. Of course, I'm not going to have anything to do with that, but let's say that I'm going to have 1111 255 255 255 0 as the IP address here. And I'm going to have a routing protocol here. So let's go with OSPF, okay? Or EAGRP, it doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to type rather, let's say, OSPF 1. Router ID is going to be 1111. And the networks that I have is going to be 10, 1, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. All of them are going to be in area 0. So this is the first one. This is the next one. Next one. Next one. And finally, I'm going to have 1, 1, 1, 1 in my OSPF instance. So let's do this. Let's go to router 2, enable, show CDP neighbor, and you can see that R1 is connected to Ethernet 00. So let's go to configuration mode, interface Ethernet 00. IP address is going to be 10.1.2.2. And let's have an, uh, a lookback interface as well. Interface lookback 0, IP address is going to be 2.2.2.2. Too many fives and too few fives and no two of course <laughs> okay now I'm going to have router OSPF 1 as well so router ID is going to be 2222 two, two, two. and the networks which I'm going to add 10122 two, in area 0 now you can see there is an adjacency after some time also, the network 2222-0000, area 0. And here is the adjacency that I have here. Okay, let's save everything, go to router 3, and I'm going to be super quick. And configuration, and show CDP neighbor, says that Ethernet 00, 00 is connected to router 1. So, interface Ethernet 00, 00. IP address is going to be... It's 10, 1, 3, 3. And an interface loopback, of course, should be there. IP address is going to be 3, 3, 3, 3. Okay, now rather OSPF 1. And the router ID is going to be 3, 3, 3, 3. Network one three three. Okay. And also network three 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 three. And you see the adjacency of course. So the configuration and other routers as well.
IP address is going to be 10144. And too many Ds. Interface loopback 0. IP address is going to be 4444. And again, rather OSPF1. Router ID is going to be 4444, network 4444, in area 0, network 10144, in area 0. Okay, after some time we should see an adjacency as well here. And let's go and do the last one. In configuration mode, router Okay, interface Ethernet 00, IP address is going to be 10155. And interface loopback 0 is have, going to have an IP address of 5555. Okay, and finally, OSPF process. And the networks, of course. And we should see an adjacency here. Okay. So this is the basic configuration that we have right now. So, uh, if I check the IP routing table, and what I am checking here is called the global routing table. You can see that I have access to almost every other router in the network. So whether they are branches of my company or not, it doesn't really matter. I have access to all of them. Now I'm going to assign these as some other networks attached to this. And there is going to be the problem. And of course the first problem is I shouldn't be accessing routes from another customer's routing table. That's a problem. I should not be able to do that. So let's go with uh, some configuration, some VRF configuration, and see what we are going to have here. So on router 1, which is the center, I should kind of virtualize the router. So for this, I need to configure VRFs. And there are two ways to configure VRFs. One, the old school, one, the new way. So for old school, what you need to do is to type IP VRF. And after that, a name. Let's say, for example, red. And as soon as you hit enter, there are some more commands that you can configure here. Most important of them is rot distinguisher and rot target. So let's start with rot distinguisher. So we know that router 2 and 4 need to be able to, you know, communicate with each other, but not the rest. So what I'm going to do is to type 24, for example, 24. Uh, you know the syntax of route distinguisher, but I'm going with simple numbers so that I can remember it easier. So this is my route distinguisher. Everything which is going to be prepended to the routes so that I know which routing table this route belongs to. So once again, which routing table this route belongs to. This is going to be determined by the route distinguisher. What about route target? If I type route target, you can see that I can assign export and import separately, or I can assign both uh, the same. So what does this mean? Let's say that I have this on one router and this on one router, routing tables. Now I want to synchronize these two. This is going to send to the other side routes with a route target of let's say 1-1. One, one. When it sends with 1-1, one, one, if the other side wants these routes, it needs to import 1-1. One, one. So this is 1-1 one, one here. Now the same way back should be implemented. Now again, I can use the same values because they do not have anything to do with them. 
or I can just assign new values, for example, 2, 2. And this site should be able to receive 2, 2 as well. But just for the sake of simplicity, again, I'm going to go with similar numbers on both sides. So if I just type both, it is going to create two commands for me. Both is not a command, it's a micro, which means that if you type both, it is going to create an import and an export. So what I'm going to do is to type both, and let's say that 24, 24 again for the sake of simplicity, because rot target is a separate value, rot distinguisher is a separate value, so they are not going to have any problem with each other if they are configured similarly. Very nice. Now that I have created the VRF, if I just show IP VRF here, or show VRF simply, both of them are going to show you the same result. You can see that it says there is a VRF red, and the route distinguisher is 2424, and it hasn't been assigned to any interface. The difference between show IP VRF and show VRF is this part. Show VRF is going to show you the protocol which is enabled for this. And if I go up here, you can see that show IP VRF does not have any address family inside. So this means that we are kind of limited when we use IP VRF for configuration of beer. Now let's go and assign this to the interfaces because it says that we haven't assigned an interface to this VRF. So what I need to do is first of all check to see what IP addresses I have. I don't want to forget what IP addresses I have. So either I have the diagram and based on that diagram I'm going to know which IP address is assigned to which interface or I just have show IP interface brief here. Now that I have here and you know why I did in a second. So I'm going to go to configuration mode and I go to interface Ethernet 00 which I believe is connected to router 2, yes. Then I'm going to type IP VRF, and that is because I created this VRF using IP VRF, and then forwarding, and then the name of the VRF that I have here. Now see what happens. If I hit enter, it says that the IP address that you had assigned before is now removed. You need to assign a new IP address. Okay, interesting. Now let's go here and type IP address again. IP address is 10.1.2.1.255.255.255.0. Now I have this IP address connected here and I'm going to go to privilege mode. I'm going to show VRF one more time. Now it says that interface E10 is 0, 0 is connected to is kind of assigned to BRF red. Very nice. Let's save everything and do some verification. From router 2, I can ping 10121. And the ping is successful. From router 1, I cannot ping. That is interesting, right? Why can't I ping from router 1 while the ping from router 2 was successful? That is because this address, this interface, is assigned to a VRF. So normal VRF ping is not going to work. So from now on, you should know that any command that we have has a command, has a global version and has a virtual version. And for virtual version, what I need to do is to type ping and after that, I use the VRF, which is going to be here. So ping VRF red 10122. Now this is going to work without any problem. Oh, 10122, as a matter of fact, I just type 1122. So let's do this one more time. Instead of 1, I just hit 10. And you can see that the ping is super successful without any problem. Okay, let's do the rest of the configuration in next session.